Hello, I'm Sam Ingalls. I'm the editor-in-chief of Sound on Sound magazine, and I get asked a lot of questions. A lot of those questions begin with the same words. Do I need... Do I need to go to the shops? Do I need a shower? But most of all, I get asked things like, do I need a mic preamp? And if you're asking that question, what you probably mean is, at the moment, I'm just plugging my mics straight into my audio interface. But people on the internet keep saying, dude, that's not pro. If you want to get pro sound, you've got to get yourself a fancy outboard mic preamp and plug your mics into that instead. So do you need a mic preamp? Well, maybe. There are three basic reasons why you might want to add a mic preamp to an existing setup. The first one is simple. You simply haven't got enough mic preamps. Let's say you want to record a drum kit. Your audio interface only has two mic preamps built into it. You're going to need more mic preamps. The second reason is if the preamps in your audio interface aren't quite up to the job. You want to record the sound of a field mouse scratching its knees, you're getting a vanishingly quiet signal into your DAW, you've got the gain turned up full, you've got nowhere to go. And the third reason is for the sound. You want to add an outboard mic preamp to get that liquid 3D solid full empty thesaurus busting magical sound that some mic preamps are supposed to have. So, do you need a mic preamp? Three basic reasons why you might want to add a mic preamp to an existing recording setup. And out of those three reasons, only the first one is really completely cut and dried. If you want to record more microphones simultaneously than you have mic preamps, then yes, you are going to need more mic preamps. And the question then becomes not do I need a mic preamp, but how can I add a mic preamp to my existing setup? The answer to that question is going to come down to what expandability options are offered by your audio interface, and usually that means digital inputs. If you have a digital input in the SPDIF format, that can take either a single channel or a two channel output from a mic preamp that has an SPDIF output. If you have an ADAT optical input on your audio interface, you can actually get up to eight channels of extra mic preamps using something called an ADAT expander. If your audio interface doesn't have any expansion options, it's time for a new audio interface or a smaller drum kit. So that's the first reason why you might want to add a mic preamp to an existing recording setup. What about the second one? You're recording speech or acoustic guitar or the sound of moss trembling. You've got the gain turned all the way up on your interface preamps and you're still getting a feeble signal level into your DAW. Can you fix that by buying another mic preamp? Well, yes, you can. But before you do, it might be worth asking whether you really need to, because the signal to noise ratio in something like speech is probably only around 40 decibels. And the dynamic range on the inputs on your audio interface is going to be at least 100 dB. So from that point of view, it actually doesn't really matter whether your signal peaks at minus 10 dBFS, minus 20 or even minus 40. All you need to do is record it and then turn it up afterwards in your DAW and it will be exactly the same signal with exactly the same noise floor. So from a purely technical point of view, low signal levels aren't necessarily a problem in 24-bit recording. From a practical point of view, however, they can be a bit of a pain in the arse. So it can be very well worthwhile buying an external mic preamp, and the simplest way to fix low signal levels is to get one of those inline booster preamps that sits between the microphone and your existing preamp in your audio interface. These typically add 20 or 25 dB of fixed gain, and they help to get the signal up to that healthy level where you see nice big waveforms in your DAW. You can also choose to buy an external mic preamp and attach it to the digital input on your audio interface. But how do you know it's going to be better than the preamps in your audio interface? Well, to find that out, you need to consult the specs. Two specs are key here. One is the gain range in decibels. The other one is the maximum input level in dBU. And if you subtract the gain range from the maximum input level, then you now know the quietest signal level that will trigger a full-scale deflection going into your DAW. So if, for example, the preamps in your audio interface have a gain range of 50 dB and a maximum input level of plus 10 dBU, 
An external mic preamp with a gain range of 60 dB might actually be less suitable if it also has a maximum input level of plus 24 dBU. So choose carefully. So the first two reasons for buying a mic preamp are actually pretty boring. What about the third one? Will buying a mic preamp make your music sound better? Well, what it probably won't give you is significantly lower distortion or a flatter frequency response than the preamps that are in your audio interface. It won't put your drummer into time, it won't make you sing in tune, it won't address your questionable production decisions about the melodic part. But what it might do is give you more distortion than the preamps in your audio interface. And that's what people are talking about when they talk about mic preamps having a sound. Pretty much any mic preamp, if you operate it within its comfort zone, will sound the same. When people talk about mic preamps having a character or a sound, they're talking about operating them outside of their comfort zone. That's something you can't do with the preamps on your audio interface, and if you could, it would sound terrible. So to push a mic preamp out of its comfort zone and get that lovely richness and harmonic saturation, we often need to apply more gain than we strictly need to get the signal up to the right level. When we do that, we overdrive the mic preamp, and if it's the right sort of mic preamp and we've done it in the right way, we'll get that pleasing effect. If it's the wrong sort of mic preamp or we've done it in the wrong way, it'll sound frankly disgusting. But the issue with doing this is that we often end up with a signal coming out of the mic preamp that's actually too hot for the inputs on our audio interface. So what we need is a way of controlling the output level from the mic preamp as well as the input level. For this reason, it can be very useful to have a preamp that doesn't only have an input gain control but also has an output level control or a fader or attenuator as it's sometimes called. Not all outboard mic preamps have these, so it's a feature that you definitely want to look out for if you're buying a preamp purely for its sound. How much difference does it make? Well, if you push it too far, you'll turn your preamp into a fuzz box, and that's definitely not pro. If you're too conservative, you may well not really notice any difference at all compared with the preamp that was in your audio interface already. But if you get it exactly right, there certainly is a sweet spot. If everything in the signal chain is right, you've got the right mic pointing at the right instrument in the right room being played by the right person, then yes, this can certainly be a good reason to add a mic preamp to an existing setup and help you get closer to the sort of sound that professional engineers are getting from day to day. So I hope this video has helped you answer the question, do I need a mic preamp? And if the answer to that question for you is yes, the next question is, which mic preamp? To find the answer to that question, you need to read Sound on Sound magazine. Every month we review the latest studio equipment, from preamps to monitor speakers, from headphones to synthesizers. The new October issue is out now, and you can read it for free at soundonsound.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.